Hi again, everyone. Gary Digit Williams here on Beltway Boxing News and Notes on the Box On Beltway Podcast Network. Of course, as always, you can hear the podcast network on Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio.com, Stitcher.com, Google Podcasts, Podcast Addict, Spotify, and on TuneIn as well. So we thank you for joining us once again for another edition of Beltway Boxing News and Notes. And we have a lot to cover this week, including the recap of the Beltway boxers who appeared on the card at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, back on uh, January 25th, as well as two upcoming cards, one in the area on February on Saturday, February 8th. We have another card that will be coming to Live Casino in Hanover, Maryland, our first Beltway boxing show in Maryland. And we also have um, some tributes, and I actually want to do tributes early this week, and also we have uh, just some follow up on what I was talking about this past week. So I do have some updates on that. So we'll talk more about that as we go along. Beltway Boxing News and Notes on the Box on Beltway Podcast Network brought to you as always by Real Time Pain Relief. From boxers to ball- ballerinas, shoulder pain and muscle strain, everything in between, Boxing Along the Beltway recommends Real Time Pain Relief, the natural, plant-based, safe, fast, effective ointment. You go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of real-time pain relief. You get a free $10 tube of real-time pain relief, the official pain relief of the 2020 Daytona 500. Rub it on, the pain is gone in real time. And buy DebraSpears.com with great weight loss tips and great training and great jewelry as well. You can go to Debra, that's D-E-B-R-A Spears.com. Well, I'll talk about this week, um, the first... Uh, this past week, we had a uh, big card at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, where a number of Beltway boxers were involved, uh, all of them winning by unanimous decision. Of course, the former unified super welterweight champion Swift Jared Hurd was in the co-feature that was shown on Showtime. He's out of Akeek, Maryland. He won his first fight after losing his titles, capturing a 10-round unanimous decision over Francisco Chia Santana of Santa Barbara, California, at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York now. What was interesting about this bout, of course, was, of course, Jared Hurd has a new trainer. He's working now with Kay Karoma, who is assistant coach of the United States National um, Amateur Boxing Team. And it was a different different uh, boxer that we came to see in this card, as opposed to his old ways of, of going in trying to overpower everybody. Um, Jared Hurd did not get into a slugfest in this bout. He boxed his way through the bout. A lot of people... Didn't like that. They were not used to it. They thought he was not doing what he they felt he was supposed to do. And he felt the bout was boring. But Hurd was able to do what he had to do. He finished the bout. He knocked Santana down the last round. And he went on to win the bout by scores of 97-92 and 99-90 twice. He looked good, I think, overall. It's a different Jared Hurd that we're used to. And I think that will help him down the road. And we'll see what happens. Hurd is now 24-1, 16 KOs. Santana falls to 25-8-1 with 12 KOs. So congratulations to Swift Jared Hurd. He seems to be back on track after losing his titles to Julian Williams in uh, May of last year. Meanwhile, three other Beltway boxers uh, won bouts, all by unanimous decision. District Heights, Maryland welterweight, the next big thing, Keyshawn Williams. He went eight rounds for the very first time as a pro. He defeated Gaku Takahashi of Los Angeles, California by way of Japan. Now, Williams did hit Takahashi with some very, very big-time punches, but the Takahashi proved to be very durable through the bout. But Williams won by scores of 79-73, 78-74, and 80-72. He remains undefeated at 7-0-1, 2 KOs. Takahashi falls to 16-11-1 with 8 KOs. So, congratulations to, to Keyshawn Williams, uh, District Heights, Maryland. Meanwhile, Baltimore, Maryland welterweight, Lorenzo Truck Simpson, he won a six-round unanimous decision over Antonio Luis Hernandez of Kansas City, Kansas. Simpson wasn't controlled for the majority of the bout. He landed crisp jabs to the shot and shots to the body. All three judges scored about 59-55. Uh, Simpson that did kind of take a break in the fifth round, and uh, not just fought well in that round, but basically it was all Lorenzo Simpson. He's 7-0 and with four KOs. And now this drops to two, eleven, and one. And in the final bout of the night, um, Patrick YGP Pat Harris out of Hyattsville, Maryland, super lightweight. He won an eight-round unanimous decision over Clay, third-degree Burns in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, Harris dominated the bout, and he won by scores of 80-72 across the board. Harris now 19-09 KOs. Burns falls to 8-72 with four KOs. So that was the uh, big uh, 
being a bout a card in uh, Brooklyn, New York at Barclays Center, and all four Beltway boxers did win. There was another bout that took place on February, on uh, January 25th, and that was a bout featuring a guy by the name of Suleiman Sigawa. He's out of Silver Spring, Maryland, by way of Kampala, Uganda, and he fought at a card at the Hearst Coliseum in Shreveport, Louisiana, and he fought to an eight-round split decision draw against Zora Hamazarian, and I believe he's out of um, out of Kazakhstan. I believe um, the bout was um, bout was apparently a very even bout. Didn't get a chance to see it, of course, but uh, one judge scored about seventy-eight, seventy-four for Sagawa, and another judge scored a seventy-five, seventy-seven, seventy-five for. Hamazarian and Pat Dayton, the, the third judge, scored about uh, 76 76. The other two judges, Keith Thibodeau, scored about for uh, Sagawa. Lofton scored about for Hamazarian. And, uh, and Pat Dayton saw the draw 76 76. So Suleiman Sagawa's record now 13 2 and 1 with four KOs. And uh, Hamazarian falls to 9 2 and 1. So we don't, um, we have never seen. Uh, Sagawa here in the Beltway, uh, so I don't know who handles him and all, but he's never fought here in the Beltway yet, so hopefully he will do that soon. So that's the update on the card, uh, cards in on uh, January the 25th. Now, before we continue, I have, uh, have two, uh, tributes to give out before we continue. Uh, one is very late, and I do apologize. I was still trying to find some information on him before he passed, to, after he passed away, but, uh, finally I did get some information on him. Uh, we lost a very fine trainer here in the Beltway out of Alexandria, Virginia, named Dennis Porter. Dennis was the, uh, longtime trainer and head of the group over the Alexander Boxing Club. And, uh, really sorry to hear that, and, uh, he met a lot of people, a lot of people, in that Virginia, Virginia part of the Beltway, trained underneath him, and uh, very sad to hear about his passing. Didn't know him all that well. I think I met him a few times, but never didn't really know him all that all that much. But uh, was able to uh, know he was a fine trainer. Also, we, just this past week, we lost a one of the big fans here in the Beltway, and uh, she was quite a character, no question about that. And uh, we're definitely going to miss her. Her name was Annette Douglas, and she was the mother of Tyra Shea and Antoine Douglas. And uh, she was known as Mama D, Mama Douglas. And she was, uh, again, quite a character. Um, we did a card one time. I think it was over at um, somewhere in Boulder. I think it was Martin's West. Might have been Martin's West. And uh, one March, she me do our broadcast. And, uh, and Tyra Shea Douglas was was uh, competing. I believe she was in the co-feature that bout. I think it was the night where uh, it might have been the night where Tori Nelson, Jennifer Salinas, and and Tyra Shea Douglas all fought on the same card. And uh, and when she took when Tyra Shea took the ring, you know, Juan and I, Juan Marsh and I were doing our broadcast, and uh, <laughs> we knew that somewhere along the line, Ms. Douglas was was nearby. And to this day, it's still the only podcast I've had where I've had to put the explicit title on it because she did what she does. And she was very, very vocal, to say the very least, in support of her daughter. She's a she was a very nice woman. Um, you know, they overcame a lot of of uh, adversity in their lives. Uh, um, I think uh, Miss Douglas lost both Tarashia and Antoine due to some complications with drugs but she got herself together and she really became, she really was a very very nice lady i'm gonna miss her she was she brought a lot of color to say the very least to the beltway boxing scene so we lose uh and annette douglas the the mother of uh antoine and tyra Shea douglas so uh condolences to both people involved with uh dennis porter as well as annette douglas now we continue we go to our cards for this week and we have one card here in the Beltway, our first Beltway boxing card of 2020. Once again, that'll be on Saturday, February the 8th at Tyson's Playground, Vienna, Virginia. Unfortunately, I would not be able to make this card. I have a, bo- a basketball game early in the day, and I just can't get over from Baltimore over to Vienna, Virginia. I really can't do that. And I have to wake up the next morning. I'm going to talk more about um, the job situations uh, in the next, next uh, in our last segment on the uh, podcast. So... 
The uh, first Broadway boxing card, once again, is an old school boxing promotions card, Saturday, February 8th at Tyson's Play- Playground in Vienna, Virginia. We have more of the card now. So we're going to give you a little bit more of the card. Uh, main event, of course, undefeated DC middleweight Dusty Hernandez Harrison. He'll be in the main event against veteran Les Lock and Load Sherrington of Broad Beach, Queensland, Australia. Scheduled for eight round bout. Harrison 33 and 0 1, 19 KOs, coming off that seventh round TKO over Juan Downhill on July 19th at the MGM National Harbor Casino in Oxon Hill, Maryland. Sherrington's 38 14 with 22 KOs. He broke a four bout losing streak in his last outing, stopping Keon Johnson in the seventh round on December 14th in Indianapolis, Indiana. Once again, Harrington will be the Harrison, I should say, will be the second local boxer that Sherrington has faced. Sherrington lost by fourth round, four round TKO to Antoine Douglas in November 2015 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, so Dusty Nannis Harrison in the main event against Les Sherrington. Co feature has undefeated upper marble heavyweight Mike Silverback Balgan. He is opponent now for his eighth round, eight round bout. His name is Adnan Buharalija, Buharalija, Norcross, Georgia, Norcross, Georgia, excuse me, by way of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Buharalija is 34, 32, 24, and 3 with 23 KOs. He won a four round game decision over Wadel Zapeta in his last outing in May of 2018 in Norcross, Georgia. Meanwhile, uh, Balgan is 15 and 0. 11 KOs. He scored a first round knockout over Mike Bissett on October 24th at the Capitol Hilton Hotel in Washington, D.C. Elkridge, Maryland, lightweight Red Carmen Dante Cox. He will take on now Christopher Johnson of South Bend, Indiana. Johnson is 0 6. He lost four round unanimous decision to Yusef Saleh on December 15th in Gary, Indiana. Cox is 5 1, 3 KOs. He's won two straight. Since his last loss, since his only loss to Devontae Speed Rawls back on March 8th at Live Casino in uh, Hanover, Maryland. His last outing had Cox winning a four round unanimous decision over Elliott Brown on December 7th in Sterling, Virginia. We have that all Fort Washington four round middleweight contest between Ian Dancer Coakley and Platinum Power Leo Al- Alcantara Perez. Uh, Coakley. <clears throat> Is uh, 1-0, one won his pro debut back in August of 2018. Took an unanimous decision from Carlos Cruz in Sterling, Virginia at uh, at the uh, Michael and Son Sportsplex. Perez is 3-0, one KO. He scored his first pro knockout, a third-round stoppage of DeAndre West back on June 29th at the Gardens Ice House in Laurel, Maryland. So there we have though, that bout. That should be an interesting bout there, or Fort Washington bout there. Ian Coakley and Leo Alcantara Perez. Meanwhile, debuting featherweight by the name of Raging Robert Shackelford. He's from Clinton, Maryland. He'll make his pro debut against Stephen Lopez of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Lopez is 0-4. Now, Shackelford, I don't know a whole lot about, in all honesty. Um, I believe he's fought some amateur, but uh, no golden gloves, anything of that nature. So, it'll be interesting to see what he does in this bout against uh, Stephen Lopez of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Leslie Maryland Super Featherweight Nathaniel Lee ASAP Davis will be in a four round encounter against Veron Webb of North Carolina. Davis is one and one, one KO. He'll look to bounce back from the second round TKO loss to Rolando Vargas. That was on July 19th at the MGM National Harbor Casino, Knox Hill, Maryland. Webb is one and five. He lost by third round knockout in his last outing to Daniel Arujo Figueiredo of, in November 16th, on November 16th in Orlando, Florida. Also on the card, Oxhill, Maryland, welterweight Akeem Jackson. He'll take on veteran Anthony Dave of Canton, Ohio. That bout is scheduled for four rounds. Jackson lost his pro debut by four-round unanimous decision to Damon Towns. That was on December 14th at Tyson's Playground. Dave is 1-18-1. He also fought in that December 14th card. Lost a four-round unanimous decision to D.C.'s Terrian Venable. So that is the card as we know it for the um, Saturday, February 8th card at Tyson's Playground, VM Virginia, the old school boxing promotions car. I hope you go out and support it. Unfortunately, I cannot go out there, and uh, we'll see what happens down the road on that car. I hope to get the results of that card in the next week or so. Meanwhile, February 8th at the PPL Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania, we have the Russell Brothers back in action uh, on a card at the uh, PPL Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Main event has WBC featherweight champion Mr. Gary Russell Jr. He'll defend his title against undefeated IBO title holder Tuscott T- King Tug Niambayar 
of Los Angeles, California by way of Mongolia. Now, originally, this is supposed to be a uh, title versus title bout, but I don't think it is now. Um, last I've seen, there's only four Russell's WBC featherweight championship. So we'll see what happens. Russell's 30 and one, 18 KOs. He last fought on May 18th and registered a fifth round TKO over Kiko Martinez in Brooklyn, New York. The is 11 and 0, nine KOs. He comes off his win for that vacant IBO featherweight title. He took a 12 round unanimous decision over Claudio Moreno in January, 2019. Also at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Now, uh, that bout, by the way, will be a Showtime telecast uh, scheduled to get on the way about 9 o'clock, and Gary Russell Jr. scheduled to headline said Showtime telecast. Now, on the undercard, two of the, Russell, the other two Russell brothers will be on the card, undefeated super lightweight Antoine the Last Russell. He'll risk his perfect record. He's 12-0. All 12 was wins by knockout against Jose Marufo of Phoenix, Arizona, by way of Mexico. And Russell has yet to go past four rounds. His last bout was scheduled for 10 rounds, but he knocked out Juan Huertas in two rounds by TKO on November 2nd at the MJ National Harbor Casino in Oxon Hill, Maryland. Marufo is 12-9-2, 1-0. KO. He comes off an eight-round majority decision loss to Willie Shaw on August 24th in San Mateo, California. That was the second time he, he had faced uh, Marufo. His face Shaw the first time he won the bout by eight-round majority decision. So we'll see. That's pretty interesting as... Uh, See, somebody that can actually test Antoine Russell. because Nobody has done that. He has just dominated his competition. So hopefully he'll be able to get a little test on this card against Jose Marufo. Also, undefeated bandwagon, Antonio Another Russell, 16-0, 12 KOs. Probably one of the most underrated boxers in the beltway right now. He's slated to be on a card in a scheduled 10-round contest against an opponent to be determined. Also in that November 2nd show in Oxford, Maryland, Russell scored a crushing first-round TKO over Samuel Gutierrez uh, that night. So uh, Russell's ready to go. He just has not, I don't think he's gotten the publicity that his younger brother has. And I think because of that, uh, uh, he's been under, under the radar a little bit more. And uh, he should be uh, a little bit, bit in better situations than uh, he has been. Now, his last bout against Gutierrez, Gutierrez was 2-11. That doesn't help much, to be quite honest with you. But uh, hopefully he'll get uh, uh, some some pub off this uh, next bout coming up. Now there's another beltway box that's slated for this card. Bowie Maryland welterweight Marlon the Machine Bowling. He'll participate in his first scheduled six-round bout against Osmel Mayorga of Miami, Florida by way of Nicaragua. Uh, Bowling is 3-0, two KOs coming off a second-round stoppage of Kevin Womack Jr. That was on December 7th at the... Uh, Tyson's Playground. No, I'm sorry, at the Michael Sun Sportsplex in Sterling, Virginia. Meanwhile, my Yorga is 2 0, 1 KO. He last fought on May 24th. He won a four round unanimous decision over Jack Grady that was in Miami, Florida. So that is the card at uh, PPL Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Remember the uh, main event, Gary Russell Jr. taking on Tuscott Niambayar. And uh, that bout will be on Showtime. And the schedule. Uh, time for that bout is 9 p.m. The telecast, you say, is 9 p.m. Eastern time. Now, I want to let you know about another card that's coming in February to uh, Live Casino in, in uh, Hanover, Maryland. This will be a Jetta Promotions card on Friday, February 28th. Three of the bouts on that card have already been announced, and two of them are title shot, title bouts. So that should be interesting to see what happens here. But the main event has Lower Maryland Super Midweight, DeMond, the best at it, Nicholson. He'll be in a 10-round bout against Mike Guy of Sacramento, California. Now, Nicholson, who is 22-3-1, 20 KOs, he'll make his third straight trip to Live Casino. He's been very successful there. Last time out, Nicholson won an eight-round unanimous decision over Devon Lee on October the 18th. Of course, he beat Jesse Nicolo there in the first round, and uh, he had one other win there as well. He won he won one of his titles, his regional titles there, so he's been doing very well. So actually, this, I believe it's his fourth time over, fourth time overall, I should say, at... Uh, at uh, Live Casino, but this is his third time in a row. Now, Guy is 12, 4, and 1, 5 KOs, currently riding a three bout winning streak of his own. He includes an eight round split decision win over the man known as Mama's Boy, Dennis Duglin. That's a big win for him. That was on November 15th in Salt Lake City, Utah. So, it should be an interesting bout. I mean, Guy has fought some decent people and, you know, beaten Dennis Duglin, who was once considered a title contender. Uh, that's a big win. So we'll see what happens with this one. It's about scheduled for 10 rounds. Demond Nicholson battling Mike Guy. Now, here are the two title bouts. First one 
One will be for the Maryland State Cruiserweight title. Undefeated Greenbelt Maryland's Vanilla Gorilla, Sam Crossett. He will take on Slick Nick Kisner of Baltimore. And that should be interesting. Crossett is 9-0, 5 KOs. He last fought on December 14th. He won a four-round unanimous decision over Michael Davis in Vienna, Virginia. Now, early part of Crossett's career, very early, uh, he was knocking people out left and right. But uh, last few bouts have been unanimous decisions. One was kind of a... Uh, a uh, Decision that maybe cross it that deserves. So uh, that should be interesting to see what happens with that. So uh, uh, cross will be in a tough one against Nick Kisner. Nick Kisner again. He he is taking some real tough bouts and and uh, last time out of live casino on October 18th, Kisner who's 21 five and one six KOs. He was knocked out in the second run round by Danny Kelly. He had announced his retirement after that bout, but. Uh, he decided to give it another shot. We'll see what happens. And uh, it's, it's definitely youth versus experience. And Kisner, for <clears throat> most part, has been on the youth side. He's now on the experience side. Not to say he's old by any stretch of imagination, but he has definitely more experience than Sam Crossett has. He's been through the amateurs, one more uh, highly regarded amateurs out of the beltway in quite some time. But uh, this will be interesting. So... Sam Crossett battling Nick Kisner for the Virginia, for the Maryland State Cruiserweight title. That'll be about scheduled for 10 rounds. And another bout that's eight rounds in, in length, scheduled eight rounds, will be for the vacant WBC Youth Intercontinental Super Featherweight title. That'll be between Washington, D.C.'s Jordan Short Dog White and Ronaldo Criminal Solis of Cancun, Mexico. This bout is scheduled for eight rounds. Now, White, who's 9 and 1, 7 KOs, he's won his last five bouts since suffering his only loss in May of 2017. White comes off a fourth round TKO win over Vincent Jennings. That was in August, on August 2nd at Live Casino. Meanwhile, Sol- Solis is 4-0-1, three KOs. He'll compete in the United States for the first time. Last scored a second round TKO over Arturo Hernandez on September 7th in Cancun, Mexico. So that should be interesting. That should be a great bout between White and Solis. And we'll see. We'll get an idea how where Jordan White is in, in uh, his career. Coming up in this bout. That'll be for the vacant WBC Youth Intercontinental Super Featherweight title. DC's Jordan Short Dog White battling Ronaldo Criminal Salis of Mexico. Scheduled for eight rounds. Now, a number of belly boxers scheduled to be on this card. They do not have opponents as of yet. Talking about Germantown, Maryland Super Featherweight, Ibrima Jawara, 3 and 1, 1 KO. Two of Maryland Featherweight, the ambitious one, Malik Lofton. He's 4 and 1, 2 KOs. Of course, they fought each other at one time. Clinton, Maryland Featherweight, Jane Stansel, the third, 1 and 0. Arnold Maryland Super Featherweight Blaze Fiedler Hernandez. He is has one draw on his record uh, in his only pro bout. Owings Mills Maryland Lightweight Brandon Brody Chambers, 2 0 1 1 KO. He's a police officer, much like Tony Jetter is, by the way, in Baltimore. Baltimore Maryland Super Featherweight Ernest Frost Hall, 3 1 1 KO. As well as Cockeysville Maryland Super Midweight AJ. We are Williams. He's 2 and 1, 1 KO. All those boxes looking for opponents on this card. And that's Friday, February 28th at Live Casino in Hanover, Maryland. So we'll see what happens going forward on that. Now, coming up, the Washington Golden Gloves. And we have the schedule for the Golden Gloves for this year. All the bouts will take place at Rosecroft Raceway in Fort Washington, Maryland. And it'll get on the way on Saturday, February the 15th, with the first day of preliminary action. By the way, all the times are 7.30. All about all the cards for the Golden Gloves are at Rosecroft Raceway in Fort Washington, Maryland. And it'll be at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So the first day is Saturday, February 15th, the first day of preliminary action. The preliminaries will continue on Saturday, February 22nd, and Saturday, February the 29th. Now, the semifinals of the Golden Gloves Tournament, Washington Golden Gloves Tournament, will be on Saturday, March 17th, and they'll continue on Friday, March 13th. Once again, Friday, March 13th, as well as Saturday, March the 21st. So, once again, the semifinals of the tournament, Saturday, March 7th, Friday, March 13th, and as well as, um, as, well as Saturday, March 21st. Okay? That should be good. Now, the Washington Golden Gloves Championship Finals will take place on Saturday, April the 4th. Once again, it'll be at, at Rosecroft. Saturday, April the 4th is the uh, Washington Golden Gloves Championship Finals. And the regional 
uh, Championship Finals will be on Saturday, April the 18th, also at Rosecroft Raceway. And of course, the regional championships matches the D.C., Maryland, and Delaware champions against the title holders from Virginia and North Carolina. So, Saturday, April the 4th is the Washington Championships. Saturday, April 18th is the we are the regional championships. I said they are the regional championships. Okay. So those are the titles. And once again, all action begins at 7 30 p.m. All right. Now, tickets for the preliminary action that includes the preliminary as well as the semifinals. Tickets for that are $20. No word yet on the ticket prices for the championship days. So uh, that's the schedule. Once again, we get on the way Saturday, February 15th. With the first day of preliminary. Hope you can join out and support the amateurs. And of course, this is the big year. This is, of course, uh, Olympic time as well. So, Olympic trials will be coming up in Lake Charles, Louisiana, in very, very soon. Now, finally, uh, last podcast, I mentioned um, some situation involving myself when it comes to this coverage of boxing. And The last few months, a lot of things have changed my life. One big thing and one thing I'm extremely happy about is my new job. Uh, For those who do not know, and I I can announce it uh, confidently now since I've been certified, so to speak. Uh, I am a tour guide. I am a narrator at Arlington National Cemetery in Arlington, Virginia. This is the probably the most hallowed grounds for military veterans and their families ever. And it is an unbelievable place to work. Um, and I, I'm proud to say I'm a certified narrator on the tours of Arlington National Cemetery. I also do some hosting as well as some of the spots, stops that we have on the tour. But to say I love my job at this at this point is a complete understatement. I am in, I am just enthralled by this job. Um. I had to learn a very, very difficult script. It was probably the the hardest thing I've ever done in my life to learn that script for Arlington National Cemetery. We have so much history in that cemetery and I I get as much of it as I possibly can. And I was training for, I I took about three months in training for this position. That's how difficult it was. And it's getting the timing down, getting the information out and, and making sure you give a coherent tour each and every time out. And really, I'm just now even getting close to settling in. And what, what was interesting was the stop itself, the tour itself, just they have six, has six tours, has six stops. Let try it again. The tour has six stops. And I had been training on four of the stops because two of the stops were not open because of construction. And just when I was about to get really certified, they opened the two other stops. <laughs> so I, I had to learn those two stops. And along and fit them in all with the tour itself. And again, the script is very, very voluminous. It it is wordy as all get out. And you have to cut down the script and learn it. See, all my life, I've been used to to reading scripts. You know, as, as a public address announcer, you read scripts that are in front of you. And you try to give give some expression and make the script sound meaningful. So that's been my job for so many years. I have not had to learn a script since high school. In all honesty, I was a senior in high school. I was in a uh, one-man show, and I had to learn scripts for that. But that's the last time I've done it. So it was really, really difficult. But one day, doing a tour, it just clicked. And it has been clicking ever since. And I'm really happy with myself. I'm in a in a really nice place. I mean, I, I had been out of... Uh, full-time work for more than a year and i finally went to a job fair 55 and over job fair didn't know they had these but they do have them thank god and that's where i found this particular job and i love my my co-workers i love my supervisors and i love the job and it can be time consuming it can be taxing because you're doing a number of loops over and over again and coming up in March and April, we extend our hours. We're open now from 8 a.m. Eastern time to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Come the spring and summer, we'll be open up from 8 to 7. So that's going to be more time. I'm working with more people because I'm using, we're using the outdoor trams, with not trolleys that we normally have been using these days. So 
it might get a little difficult and might be even more taxing than it already is. I pray it won't be that taxing. But as long as I continue to enjoy the job, I'm not going to really complain. But it is tiring because it, it is it's tough to, especially if you're hosting, you're, you're basically on your feet a good portion of the day. And it can be very, very taxing. And so this this job and getting back to where I'm going with this, and I didn't mean to go off on a tangent like that, but I really am really am happy with the job. But because of this, my time has become somewhat limited. My condition has become not limited, but it has changed. To the point where after 36 years of covering the Beltway boxing scene, my zest for it has not completely gone, but it has waned. No question about it. It has waned. Um, I'm still in my announcing gig at, at, at Coppin State University. That will end in March. Hopefully after that time, I'll get a little bit more time to work on my boxing. But I just haven't had the time. I haven't had the time. And most importantly, I've not had the energy. So much so, I need to make this announcement. After much careful consideration, I have decided not to do the awards this year. I, I just don't have the time. I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. And I really cannot give that what it deserves. And so I'm going to skip it this year. I'm just not going to do it. I, I do apologize to the Beltway Boxers, but that's just the way I am right now. Actually, I'm sorry, not sorry, so to speak, really. I just can't do it. I really can't. I just could not do it and give it the justice that it deserves. And I mentioned last podcast that going out to Virginia to to cover a boxing card and not get paid for it and not get paid to do anything there is something I really can't do at this point. I work in Virginia every day now. You know, just this particular day as I record this, I happen to be off, but I'm usually working there at least four or five days a week. And I just I just can't go back out there after working out there, going back out there and uh, doing a show. And this particular Saturday, coming February 8th, I'll be in Baltimore doing a, a basketball game. So boxing as of right now is not as big a priority in my life as it used to be. Now, I'm still going to do the podcast, still going to blog, but that might be the extent of it. I mean, I'd be as, I mean I'm, I'm planning to go to the February 28th show at, uh, at uh, Live Casino. Um, that's probably the next show I will attend. And I, there is a card that is coming to the, uh, the MGM National Harbor Casino in March that if there are Beltway boxes on the card, I do plan to be there. Uh, if not, I'm not sure, uh, really be honest with you, I'm not sure, but I'm picking and choosing now after all these years, picking and choosing the shows I go to now, the cards I go to only because I just don't have the time to go to every show these days. Um, my coverage of the golden gloves, quite frankly, may be affected by this. It's just that I, I, I don't have the, the zest for it I once did and I don't have the energy and I don't have the time. My focus right now, and, you know, you listen to my wife, it should have been this from day one, but my focus is now my full-time job. Because it's finally, after all these years, a job that I truly, truly, truly love. And I enjoy going to work. I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I can't wait to get to work. I really can't. I really can't wait to get to work. I get on my clothes, and I wear a uniform. First time I've ever worn a uniform on a job. I love putting on that on to National Cemetery uniform. And um, and going over to work, I I love it, I really do. And uh, we have we have so many great um, legendary people there, some some real real heroes. Of course, everybody who's there is a hero, but there's some people in that cemetery who are buried that you may not think are be are buried there. And it's my job to tell you, you know, who's buried there. Many people, there. of course, Joe Lewis is there. A lot of people know that Joe Lewis is there. And uh, so, you know, it, it's just I think this job was meant for me. And uh, 
you know, I, I get I get uh, great comments from the from the guests who are there. We get guests from literally all over the world, and the guests we get, they they really seem to like what I'm doing. I try to give as good a tour as I possibly can each and every time out. And again, I'm just in a great place right now, and I'm very very happy with myself. So, because of that, my boxing coverage may wane a little bit. Please stay with me as best you can. I'm still going to kind of give you a podcast as, as as frequently as I can. I'm trying to still do at least every every two weeks, if not every week. But I'm just being honest right now, being very honest, very very transparent with you. And I thank you all for your support, your continued support over the years, and I still want to do what needs to be done to to cover this beltway boxing scene. But I'm gonna need some help along the way, so. I thank you for listening with, to me, and I thank you so much for your support as well. But that'll do it for another edition of Beltway Boxing News and Notes. Once again, box, Beltway Boxing News and Notes on the Boxing on Beltway Podcast Network. Brought to you by Real-Time Pain Relief. Go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of real-time pain relief. You get a free $10 tube of real-time pain relief, the official pain relief for the 2020 Daytona 500. Rub it on. The pain is gone in real time. And by DebraSpears.com, great weight loss tips, great jewelry, great uh, tradition. Um, I'm sorry, great weight loss tips, great jewelry, and great training methods. That's what I wanted to say. On Debra, D E B R A Spears.com. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Gary Digital Williams. We thank you so much. And as always, keep supporting the best boxing in the world, the boxing along the belt. Thanks for listening.